about account payment plans in Practice Web. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a patient payment plan, use the payment plan report, receive payment and manage a payment plan. Creating a patient payment plan. Payment plans can be set up in Practice Web to give you flexibility for those patients that need to pay a larger balance over a period of time. We do that in the account module, so I'm just going to scroll over to the account module and I'm going to show you how to create a plan for a patient that maybe had a bridge done, but the insurance didn't cover it. In this case, the patient will likely have a large expense to pay out of pocket, so this is a perfect opportunity to use a payment plan. Our patient here, John Doe, had a bridge done last month, and she owes a large chunk of money, so let's say that she had agreed to pay $500 down, and we're going to spread the rest into monthly payments. To start creating my plan, I can either just click on the payment plan button or I can click the drop down on the right and choose patient payment plan. In this window, we can set up all the details that we need for the plan starting on the upper left with the guarantor information. I've got my patient John Doe. In this example, my guarantor is also going to be John Doe. There may be some plans that you'll set up for a child and they've got someone in the account that you want someone else to be the guarantor. That's not an issue since you can always set someone else up as the guarantor aside from the actual patient who had the treatment completed. In this case, the patient and the guarantor are going to be the same person. Just below that, we can assign a particular provider However, it's going to default to whoever the patient's primary provider is. Just below that, we've got the date of our agreement, and that's always going to populate with the current date. The total amount is automatically pulled from what they are owing on the patient account. I could change the amount if I wanted to, and then I'm going to go ahead and indicate when I want my actual first payment to be due. He's going to be making a down payment today and will not be due until next month. So I'm going to leave this as my next payment date. If I wanted it to be on the first of the month instead, I could always change it so my first payment is in June. First, she's going to want to pay $500 down so I'll enter that in here, and if we're charging her interest, we can enter her APR right in this area. However, for this example, we're going to be leaving this blank. Here, we can put in if there's going to be a certain number of payments, so maybe they're going to be making five payments, then the system will split up the remaining balance and the down payment. They can also pay a flat payment amount every month or every week. Whatever we want to set up, we can always choose that as well. Let's say she's going to pay $500 a month. On the right hand side, we see this button that has more options so we can customize how often she's going to be making these payments. So if it's going to be weekly, every other week, or we can change it to suit our needs. Make sure that the total treatment amount here on the bottom left matches the total amount of our loan that we are giving her. I can just manually type in that field, so to put information there, I need to click this bottom button that says View TX Credits, which just means View Treatment Credits. So after clicking that button in the window, 
I can manually enter in a dollar amount. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and add in $3,000 that they're going to be paying on. I'm just going to add in that amount on the right hand side and click the add button. However, what if we want our payments entered to attach specifically to procedures that were already done? In that case, I can take that $3,000 out that we just highlighted and click the delete button. Now, go ahead and highlight those other three procedures that we wanted to be attached to. Those were the three procedures that were involved with the bridge, so we're going to go ahead and click add. So now I can see here that my three procedures that have been completed that were associated with the bridge are now attached to my payment plan. I'll press the OK button to accept the changes and finalize all the data entries so that way we can make sure that they'll be making payments of $500 a month. At this point, I can choose to create a payment schedule here. So I'm going to click the Create Schedule button and this is going to list out for me all of my down payment and the rest that's going to be divided up into seven more payments. We can print this out for our patient if we want to give them a copy of exactly what we're expecting and what they've agreed to. They can sign for it and you can scan it in or you can set up your payment plan signature if you have a digital signature pad in your office. So let's go ahead and enter in our down payment. So we can see on the right hand side that the down payment is due now. So I'm going to start by going to my payment button on the upper left side. And I'm going to enter my amount here and click OK. The system will automatically want to split up that payment and attach it to the payment plan. If I didn't want this to attach to the payment plan, I could delete that split and attach it to something else. But in this case, because that is what I want, I'm going to click OK to accept that payment. So in our payment grid here in our payment plan, at the very top, we can see that our account shows do now $0. If I double click to open that back up, you can see that the down payment did attach to the plan. So that's perfect. And right now it is showing our balance of $0. It will show that she has a balance again about 10 days before the first of the month, since that was when her next payment is expected to be due. You can manage when you want those payments to show as due in the Manage module under Setup, Manage, and Manage Preferences. In the middle right hand side, you'll see an option that says Days in Advance to Bill Payment Amount Due. I've got mine set to 10, but you can change it to fit whatever setup you would like. Once I make my changes, I will click OK, and that will finalize our changes we've made. Use the payment plan reports. When you're using payment plans, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of who has a payment plan who needs to make a payment and to know how much of your AR is tied up in those payment plans. So to start, we'll go to Reports, Standard, then Payment Plans. Although the Payment Plan Report is under the Monthly column, keep in mind that this report isn't specifically for monthly use, as it can be ran on a daily basis, or it can be used over a span of time. Payment plan reports allow you to search in a date range as far back as you would like to look. I want to go back to January 1st of 2019. So in my calendar, I'm going to go back to 2019. And here you see we've got a couple of different options. So we can show the family balance and we can also hide completed payment plans. In this case, we'll leave the settings as is and we're going to click OK. It'll bring up a list of our patients that have payment plans, and depending on the version of practice web that you're currently using, your reports may differ and slightly vary. 
I've got my report up so we can make it a little bit bigger here so all of my patients are in that window. It's going to show the provider, the guarantor of the payment plan, and whether or not it's an insurance plan or a patient payment plan. It will also show our principal loan amount, what they've paid so far, their remaining balance, and if they have anything that's due right now. This will show you anything that has an amount due and those patients will show up in your statement list so you don't need to worry about running this list in order to have people show up on the statement list as they'll automatically be added there as well. When I'm looking at this list, I see one of my patients here, Dave Kalpesh, and his principal amount was $525 that he was going to be paying off. However, according to this report, he's already paid off all $525, so he no longer owes us anything. So we've got a couple of options to close out his plan. Receiving payments and managing a payment plan. Once I close out of this report, I'm just going to go and pull up my patient, Dave Kalpesh, and there's his payment plan. He currently owes nothing, so we've got a few different options of how to deal with a completed payment plan. You can leave it here if that's no problem, and just leave it the way it is, so that way it'll always be open, but there will be nothing due. However, the way you decide to do things will be based on what your office wants to do, so the decision may vary by office, so there's not really any specific right or wrong way to do it. You can delete the payment plan if you no longer want it to be there and you don't need it anymore. If it's completely paid off, and if you're choosing to delete the payment plan, you'll want to make sure that you saved some kind of record of this. You could either take a screenshot, print it out, scan it into your file, and then that way you'll at least be able to go back and view in their images module what's been done. We can also click the view slash print button so you could print it out to make sure that you can scan it into the image module. If we just click delete on the lower left, we'll get a message that we cannot delete this because there are payments attached to it. If we did want to delete the plan, you'd actually have to open up each individual split and there's going to be a checkbox at the bottom that says attach to payment plan. So you'll have to uncheck that box and click OK. You would have to do that again with each of the attached payments and once they are all detached, only then will you be able to delete the plan. Again, I remind you, it's always a good idea to keep a copy of your payment plan stored somewhere just in case you ever need to refer back to it. The last option we have is a closed plan option just on the lower left here. You can just click the closed plan so it remains there and just marked as a closed plan. Now, if you don't want to see it for whatever reason, you can also hide it under the show tab. The show tab is located in the upper right above where it says family, urgent, and financial note. There is another tab that says show. In that show tab, there is a checkbox that you can uncheck if you do not want to see completed payment plans anymore. So those are your three options for closing out of any patient payment plan once it has been completed. This completes our overview of the Account Payment Plans in Practice web. If you have any questions about anything that was not covered in this tutorial, please call support at 800-845-9379, option 2, or alternatively, email us at support at practice-web.com.